As sea levels rise, glaciers melt, and climate-related disasters become more frequent, bold actions are needed to reduce global emissions to combat climate change. It is a global challenge that requires a global response. By acting together now, we can protect our planet for generations to come. My name is Diane Kostroch. And I'm Chao He. Today we are going to talk about climate change challenges and the policy options in Latin America and the Caribbean. This work is a team effort, which will be presented in our forthcoming regional economic outlook for the West Hemisphere. Latin America and the Caribbean include some of the world's largest greenhouse gas emitters, some of the most vulnerable countries to climate change, and some carbon-intensive commodity exporters, which are exposed to the shift of global demand during transformation to greener global economy. Over the last 40 years, one out of every six natural disasters hit Latin America and the Caribbean, taking 96,000 lives and affecting more than 230 million people. The Caribbean is one of the most vulnerable regions in the world in terms of frequency and economic impact of natural disasters. Damages are estimated at 2.5% of GDP annually. They affect vast segments of the population and economies and put pressure on public finances. But it's not all bad news. The region has been quite successful in utilizing renewable energy such as hydropower thanks to abundant natural endowments and the enabling policies. In contrast, the region stands out for its large share of emissions from agriculture and the reduced carbon absorption capacity due to deforestation. So what can policymakers in Latin America and the Caribbean do to address climate-related challenges while building forward better after the pandemic? Countries need to take actions on two fronts. Climate mitigation, which refers to policies that reduce emissions, and climate adaptation, which refers to efforts to adapt to the effects of climate change, as well as to safely transform a country's economy by relying less on carbon intensive activities and improving land use practices. Let's briefly look at each of those policies. To reduce emissions, policymakers have a variety of price-based and non-price-based instruments to adjust market failures. Let's begin with price-based mitigation options. Latin American economies could incorporate climate change costs in fossil fuel prices. For example, countries could reduce fuel subsidies, introduce carbon taxes, or establish a system of fee baits. All of these instruments raise the price of fossil fuels while lowering the relative price of renewables. Hence, they not only provide incentives to reduce emissions, but also to develop and adopt new green technologies. Fiscal revenues generated from some of those policies could be used to compensate the most affected groups during the transition. Another effective mechanism is the introduction of emissions trading system, which limits the quantity of emissions, allows for trading of emission rights, and lets the market to discover the right price. What are non-price-based mitigation options? They could include public green infrastructure investment, government incentives for green R&D, educational programs, supportive regulations, and others. Equipped with these instruments, governments in Latin America can help promote best farming and livestock practices, as well as employ cost-effective nature-based solutions, which are geared, for example, towards increasing land areas covered with forests to help remove carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. For countries vulnerable to large natural disasters, it will be key to enhance their adaptive capacity by developing a comprehensive disaster resilience strategy. Such a strategy can rest on three pillars, building structural, financial, and post-disaster resilience. Improving structural resilience entails investing in climate-resilient infrastructure that would reduce the impact of natural disasters. Ensuring financial resilience entails the use of fiscal buffers and pre-arranged financing to manage recovery costs in the wake of a natural disasters. 
At the same time, climate risk should be integrated into fiscal and financial frameworks, as well as budgets. And last but not least, post-disaster resilience. Countries will need emergency response plans that clarify who's responsible for what to quickly mobilize support and avoid disruption to public services, such as water, electricity, and medical services in case of natural disasters. In conclusion, Latin American and Caribbean countries are different. They have lower energy, but higher agriculture and land use emissions. As such, policymakers in the region will have to choose from a variety of tools that fit their country specifics. While the how might be different, countries have a common goal, taking decisive actions now to build a more sustainable future. It will not be an easy task. Managing the transition towards a greener economy will require comprehensive climate and social strategy, including policies to protect the vulnerable. We need to act together now to leave our planet green and prosperous for our children and for the future generations. Mm -hmm.